Good morning, guys. Today we are going to look at forces acting on a hockey puck on ice. So let's first consider the simplest case. A hockey puck is sitting at rest. What are the forces acting on the hockey puck sitting at rest on the ice? Well, we have the force of gravity down. We have the force of the ice straight up. And that's about it for forces. The result of this, these forces cancel. The puck remains at rest. These forces are equal and opposite. The force of the ice up could be considered a positive force, positive y direction. In math, the force of gravity could be considered a negative force, a negative y direction, and a positive and a negative cancel, equal and opposite. Now let's consider the hockey puck sitting on the ice being pushed to the right. Well, we still have the force of gravity down. We still have the force of the ice up. And we have the force applied from the stick, the player's skate, the player's hand, whatever is pushing the puck forward. What is the result of these forces? Well, the up-down forces still cancel, but now the puck accelerates to the right because of the applied force. These two forces cancel, the up-down forces cancel. You can imagine that they're not there and that only this force now acts. The puck responds as if this applied force is the only force acting on it. And we call this a net force. We'll have much more to say about net force and the word acceleration in the next several days. Let's look at a tricky situation. A hockey puck sliding to the right on the ice at constant speed. We have this action indicator here. This type of arrow is not a force. It's an action indicator or what I like to call a motion contract. And we need to have a motion contract in order to be able to put the forces in. We need to know what the puck is doing before we can put the forces in. It's kind of like looking out the window at the leaves on a tree. If the leaves aren't doing anything, then we can assess the forces. If the leaves are moving to the right or, or blowing to the right or the flag is moving to the right, we can say, aha, the, it's a windy day. And then someone challenges you saying, you can see the wind. No, but we can see the action or result of the wind. Well, same thing with forces. We can't necessarily see these forces, but we can see right here the result of the forces, the puck sliding to the right at constant speed. So what do the forces look like? We have the force of gravity down. We have the force in the ice up. And believe it or not, that's it. That's what makes this tricky. Most people would insist or believe at least initially that there must be a force to the right. This is not the case. The up-down forces cancel and the puck moves to the right because of inertia. This is a key word down here, inertia. Inertia is not a force, it's a behavior. It's how we explain the puck sliding to the right. It's how we explain a bowling ball once it leaves your hand continuing to roll down the lane. It's how we explain you on a bicycle stop pedaling and you continue to move forward, although you're not pedaling anymore. So inertia is a tendency to keep on doing what you're doing. The, the puck is moving. It's the tendency of the puck to keep on moving in this case. We'll have a lot more to say about inertia in the following days. All right, now look at this. We have a new motion contract. We have the puck moving to the right on the ice, but slowing down. And here's the motion contract, the declaration slowing down. Now we can put our forces in. As you might imagine, we have the force of gravity down. We have the force of the ice up. And we have the force of friction backwards. Those are the forces. This is an interesting case because we have the puck moving to the right here, moving to the right. Here's our motion contract. Our action indicator is to the right, but the only left-right forces are actually to the left. That's what makes this interesting and challenging. The result of this play, 
Well, as you might imagine, the up-down forces cancel. The puck continues to move to the right because of inertia, but now we see we slow down due to friction acting backwards. The one thing you can count on with friction is it always acts backwards. This is another example of a net force acting on the puck, causing it to change its speed, what we call acceleration. All right, more about acceleration in the lessons to follow. It's time for you to go to the Tuesday answer form and turn in your answer form for points while this lecture is fresh in your mind.